Hi, my name is Mike Habe. I'm a Senior Specialist Solutions Architect with Amazon Web Services. I specialize in Amazon Neptune and my topic today is Knowledge Graphs in Amazon Neptune. So my agenda is to begin by describing what Knowledge Graphs are and how they fit into the larger picture of Amazon Neptune. Neptune is a managed graph database service within AWS. Then I'll give a demo of a travel knowledge graph. And finally, uh, as a call to action, I'll encourage you to deploy Neptune in your own AWS account and to explore out-of-box knowledge graph notebooks. So a knowledge graph is a graph that consolidates an organization's data, making that data readily available to members of an organization. Really, it, it allows those users to get a better understanding of a particular problem domain by taking together data from multiple sources, possibly from different silos, and centralizing them all in a graph, and creating relationships between the business objects so that the users can better understand the problem domain just by really navigating through the relationships of, of the entities in the graph. And beyond uh, just ingesting source data into a graph, we can also infer new relationships by, for example, semantic reasoning, where we can logically infer new relationships from existing relationships that exist in the graph through the logical inference. Also, graph machine learning allows us to, based on a trained model, make predictions of relationships within a graph. And so once we've inferred these new relationships, we can actually augment the graph with our findings. We can expand the graph beyond what was originally adjusted with inferences. In terms of architecture, this diagram shows potential architecture centered on Amazon Neptune for Knowledge Graph. On the left are, is the source data. And so the upper left is data that comes from unstructured sources from which we would extract entities and move them into the graph. Comprehend is a service that can extract entities such as persons, organizations, and events from unstructured sources like press releases, financial statements. Um, and so if it mentions persons and organizations, for example, we can extract those and move them into a graph. Textract can take data from non-text sources such as images and tra translate them to text. And recognition is a service that allows us to extract from videos things like uh, celebrities, persons, emotions, and, and so on. And so this extracted data we can then uh, move into the, the knowledge graph in Neptune. On the bottom left corner are structured sources of data. For example, a relational database could be mapped to Neptune through the Database Migration Service, or DMS. And the chances are much of your source data is in files. So you could stage those files in Amazon S3 and then use Neptune's bulk loader to move that source data into Neptune. So Neptune in the center of the diagram is the repository of all of this data that you've ingested. And it also allows you to query the data through graph query languages. Additionally, you might want to uh, perform more elaborate searches. So the Amazon Elasticsearch service allows you to perform uh, Apache Lucene style queries, including fuzzy matching against the data that's in Neptune. Amazon Kendra is a service that could be used to add smart search to your website, for example, and could incorporate data from the knowledge graph in Neptune. And on the right are applications that you might build based on a knowledge graph. So these could include virtual assistants, chatbots, investment analysis applications, drug discovery, supply chain dashboards, or custom web applications. And I'll be showing an, a demo of such an application momentarily. So what I want to show next is a travel knowledge graph. So here is the application I wanted to demo. It's a web application representing a travel knowledge graph. 
It's publicly available at this URL, which I will share with you momentarily so that you can try it out on your own. And in the main portion of the page is a representation of the travel graph where it's shown as boxes and arrows. The boxes represent nodes or business objects or resources. The arrows represent relationships or edges. And so Rome is, is a node. So is St. Peter's Basilica. And notice that there's an edge between them, an arrow labeled has attraction, indicating that there's a relationship that Rome has the attraction, St. Peter's Basilica. So drawing graphs this way is a very common convention. This is the way in which we tend to visualize graphs. In terms of how the data is represented in a graph database, there's two main representations in the graph world today. One is called labeled property graph and is part of the Apache Tinkerpop project. The other is Resource Description Framework, or RDF, which is summarized by the W3C. And in this demo, we'll use RDF. So let's uh, navigate the data. I'm going to select the Rome node. And I can see um, the highlighted arrows represent the different relationships that Rome has with other entities in the graph. So as we saw, Rome is related to St. Peter's Basilica. It's also related to the Colosseum and so on. Rome also has a type, which is city, shown by this relationship here. On the right in the details section are uh, additional attributes of Rome. So Rome has an ID, and the ID is actually formatted as a URI, a, a web-like address. And that's a, a common convention in RDF to identify things by URIs. It also has a label. And notice it has a same as relationship to another URI. This one is defined by geonames.org. They maintain a public website of RDF data uh, in which uh, there, there is also a Rome object. They have their own URI for Rome and it's different from ours, but it's common in RDF to actually to link to alternative URIs, and we do that through this same as relationship. And also there's additional information about Rome that we can get from DBpedia, which is another RDF source. So I'll click on this button to show an abstract about Rome drawn from DBpedia. You can see a paragraph written here about Rome. Significantly, this data is not in Neptune. All of the data that you see here on the canvas and, and in this details view is actually maintained in Neptune and our web application is actually querying Neptune to get the data. But it's also able to get additional data from DBpedia and that's made possible by capability of graph called Federated Query which allows me to actually within a single query to hit multiple RDF data stores and combine the results back together. Now we can navigate in the graph, uh, so if we wanted to know more about St. Peter's Basilica, we could double click on it. And what is now rendered is St. Peter's Basilica and all of its neighboring nodes. So we can see that St. Peter's Basilica, um, that there's a, a, an edge from Rome to St. Peter's Basilica, and actually we saw that in the previous visualization, that's how we got to this point. But additionally, we see that St. Peter's Basilica has a type of attraction. It was created by Michelangelo. It is ex that the famous sculpture La Pietà is exhibited in St. Peter's Basilica, and so on. And in the details panel, we can see additional details of uh, St. Peter's Basilica, including its latitude and longitude, it has a URI, and in fact we can draw additional data from DBpedia. And just to go one step further, we could uh, drill into Vatican City by double-clicking. Now we can see Vatican City and its various relationships. Um, and I can navigate back to Rome by double-clicking here. And this takes us back to the original visualization. So in 
In exploring this graph, we've seen several different uh, nodes of different types and different relationships. There is an underlying data model for this, and in RDF we tend to call that a ontology, essentially a, a schema for graph data. The views panel in the top right shows the different types of entities that exist in this graph. So we have attractions, museums, sculptures, fountains, paintings, cities, and artists. And so if, if we click on one of these, let, let's take uh, artist. We'll see that uh, there are three actual instances of artists in this graph. There's Leonardo da Vinci, there's Michelangelo, and there's Bernini. Notice each has a type of artist. And if I wanted to see more details about any of these, I could double click to see their graphs. So here is more information about Michelangelo. So now for next steps. First of all, you can explore the same demo at the link included here. And also I'd encourage you to read about knowledge graphs in Amazon Neptune and about how customers are using knowledge graphs at this next link. You can also deploy Amazon in your own AWS account. There's a link here that will uh, guide you through that process and it's a point and click process. You'll have Neptune running in minutes. Additionally, once you have Neptune installed, there's out-of-the-box notebooks provided that uh, demonstrate knowledge graph functionality. So you can try out the notebooks to explore knowledge graphs in, in more depth. And so our demo today showed how simple it is to explore relationships in a knowledge graph and how you can answer business questions and gain insights from your data. If you're interested in building a knowledge graph or if you have similar use cases, uh, please uh, contact us. Uh, my team has uh, the email address wwso-neptune-ssa at amazon.com and we'd love to talk to you about your use case. So we looked at Knowledge Graph, it's uh, how it's architected, uh, its purpose, and we showed a demo of it, and you have some next steps to explore it further. Appreciate your time today. My name is Mike Havey, a Senior Specialist Solutions Architect with AWS. Thank you.